Hello everyone, this is M. Allen West of FlashCadabra.com and uh, today I've got sort of a funny story to tell you. I uh, uploaded a video the other day about the upcoming version of Blender 3D which is still under development and of course it still has a lot of bugs and quirks that need to be worked out um, but I was a little bit concerned of the direction it was going. The interesting thing is that the video has already received 350 views and it's only been up for three days which is funny seeing how my art portfolio on another YouTube channel has been up for maybe seven or eight years and it only has about 250 views it's just funny how that when you get a group of people maybe a little upset that they're more likely to give you views than if you are posting nice content which of course it wasn't intended to upset anybody I was just curious about if anybody had information on the direction that the new blender was going um, anyhow I'm going to show off the um, different ways to make matte caps uh, there are default matte caps inside of blender however they do not render out by default in the current version of Blender, if you open up the little side menu here by hitting this little plus icon and you scroll down, you'll see that there's a matte cap button. Now if you click that matte cap button, you can select from different matte caps and you can apply them to your object. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a subdivide onto this cube so we can really see what the matte cap is doing. So you can see that it's made this ball have this glossy sheen to it. Um, but the only problem is, is if I hit F12, that doesn't render out. So the matte cap would be nice if they actually had a feature where you could check a box and say, I want it to render out, or I want to use my own custom image for the matte cap. And you could just click the box and select your own custom image. That would be pretty cool. But as far as I know, the new version of Blender 3D does have a sculpt mode, but they don't have any options yet to create your own custom matte caps or a checkbox to render them out. Hopefully that'll be in a up and coming version. We'll see if that actually gets in there or maybe somebody will see my video and it'll influence the direction. That would be pretty cool. But I'm not even sure that anybody else would want a uh, matte cap that could be rendered out besides myself. So anyhow, I'm going to show you how to make custom matte caps that can be rendered out. And I'll start with the Blender renderer, even though I think by um, the next version of Blender, that one will be removed and be replaced by a couple of other renderers. If you go into the Renders tab, you can already see that there's no option over here for Blender Render as far as I can tell. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do Blender Renderer even though it's probably going to be taken out in later versions of Blender. We'll go over here and we'll select our object. Uh, we're going to check box where it says Shadeless underneath the Materials tab under Shading. We are going to go over into our texture, click a new texture, select image, open an image. We'll go to our matte caps. I have uh, this tab, there's a display tab up here at the top where you can actually see what your images look like. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and I'm going to click this strange matte cap that I made myself and over here down in this menu at the bottom I'm going to change over to a material shader view so we can actually see the object and its material that's applied and then we'll scroll down to mapping and change it over to normal and now we have that matte cap applied and if I hit F12 it will render out the matte cap and the cool thing about matte caps too if, is that you can sculpt, which is what they're intended for, is to help you with sculpting. So like, say I turn on dynamic topology and I turn it down to maybe, let's just say about three. 
and I start sculpting, you can see that as the object forms, the uh, matte cap will adjust to the surface, which gives it a very interesting effect. And of course, you can render it out. So we're going to undo all that. And we are going to remove this material. And we are going to go over into Cycles Renderer. So change over into Cycles. Click New Material. And we're going to have to go over this area right here in this corner and pull down to create a new window. And we're going to change this window over into a node editor. Now before we get started on this, I can't take full credit for this because I didn't actually come up with the idea. So we're going to take it all the way down to where we only have a materials output. Now I will be putting a link down in the uh, description below for the original creator of this idea. As, as far as I know, he's the original creator. So we've got this material output. Next, we need to add a mix shader. So we're going to click Add, Search, type in Mix. And we're going to take the shader and we're going to attach it to the surface. Next, we are going to add a light path. So light path. And the light path needs to be attached from is camera ray to this FAC. Now we need to add a transparent BSDF. So go back down to add, click search, and type in transparent, and select it. And then we're going to attach that to the first green shader here. Now we're going to go down and we're going to add an emission and click the add search, start typing in emission. And that will be attached to the bottom shader node here. And now we've got some light going on. Next, we're going to add an image texture. So search image texture. The image texture is going to attach from color to color on the emission. Click open. Go to our matte cap folder. Click this little display icon so we can see our matte caps. This time I'm going to pick this uh, metal one over here. Or actually, it doesn't really matter. I'll just pick the metal one. So that has added our materials here by hitting this little folder icon. Now we need to add a mapping. So click Add, Search, Mapping. Collect, uh, connect these two nodes together. Now we're going to search for a vector transform. Connect those two nodes together. And then we're going to add, search for a texture coordinate. And this one is going to go from normal to this node. Now we've already got our uh, material applied. But the problem is, you can tell when we move the object, it's not doing that following the camera thing. So what we need to do is over here where it says in the vector transform, where it says object, change that to camera. 
Now, as you can see, when we move the object around or the um, viewport around, you can actually see that the matte cap is changing, but the coordinates aren't quite right. So we could cha change these to point four, point four, I mean, of course, those aren't exactly right either. I mean, I could probably mess around with the numbers until I got it right, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that. So anyhow, that's the uh, basic gist of making your own matte cap that can be rendered out. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, it's a little bit easier in the Blender renderer. Hopefully they'll add something like that in the clay feature where you could actually make your own custom matte caps and render them out by just clicking a couple check boxes instead of having to go through this process. But nevertheless, it's pretty useful information to know how to do this. A uh, link for the other guy that actually originally created this will be down in the description. And uh, have a great day and keep blending.